Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Welcome to this video where I'm doing a beat breakdown. Basically, it's a dope trap beat. It has a lot of energy in it. And I thought it came out pretty dope. Um, got a couple beat sales and, you know, a couple people feeling it. And, you know, I just make music not just for myself because you got to have a balance between making music to sell, making music for artists, making music for other projects like TV film and making music just because you want to make it. I know we're all creatives and we like to just do what we want sometimes, but you kind of have to have a balance between those particular avenues because you just make music for yourself and nobody's feeling it you'll never make any money <laughs> just to put it frankly and uh, so anyway let me jump into it i'm gonna go over every sound every plugin um if you've seen prior videos of mine you know kind of what i do and uh let me just show you what i did uh the first thing i started with was basically this loop right here i thought it sounded pretty cool um i have different versions of it because i chopped it up and did different things uh looks like i pitched it up with the pitch here um i don't know how many cents I'll just copy it and paste value 67 percent so whatever cents you see i usually do like 100 200 300 400 500 cents so it's a even number i can see what's going on i never do like 450 or anything like that you can uh it just makes it harder to match the uh pitch of the loop so let me um, just play that first thing. A, 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 A. Okay, as you can hear, there's a lot going on with that. Let's turn off all the plugins. See, it's not that bad. It's a lot louder, but as, as you can see, I use fruity parametric eq2 cut off some of the highs and cut off a lot of the lows uh, because i wanted the sound to not have those low frequencies i use halftime to kind of give it another layer of melody uh, these are settings here you can check those out try it on different things then i use gross beat i was just going ham with plugins i use gross beat i use the um i forgot what scrt stands for uh pattern two and it's a oh, scratch so it's like a scratch pattern at the end if you listen to it it kind of scratches and there's tons of those you can change and presets you can play around with and aftermarket stuff you can buy uh, i use shaper box too to give it like a timing thing and i use that to double it up so i did a lot of sound processing then i used another one i was trying to do like a filter but i thought it was just overkill so if you notice it's off but i used it uh with automation during the verse to kind of give it quiet it down and have it build during the verse so just those are some creative things you can do with loops uh you can throw every plugin you want and try to keep coming up with something different that's basically what i did i just kept using different stuff and changing parameters so i can make the sound unique for myself uh, instead of just using what the loop gave me i just flipped it you know it, it's all about being a creative being a creative producer uh the next thing i added was like this lead so here check it out let me see that by itself uh, that's the regular loop playing on top of the reverse so what i did is um made the unique made the loop unique you click here make unique and what that does it copies the actual sound and makes another version of it so this version um i reversed it just click here and you can reverse it so i'm having the regular version a piece of it playing on top of the reverse so that's why it sounds layered like that check it out so very very like weird it sounds like something's happening but i wanted to have that transition right into it again And this next track, track three, is actually the automation that I was showing you in the uh, plugin. Uh, this is the Shaper Box that I chose. And it's funny, I chose Shaper Box 2, the newer version, and the old version just for the filter. That's funny. I must have been really moving fast on this beat. So, anyway, this is with that filter.
And notice this pattern that I have of that filter. So what it's doing is letting you hear it breathing and that gives it that dynamic effect. But I also have the automation moving with less and less effect as it goes up and then it starts again. And notice I made this unique as well because I wanted to go even lower on the second part of that. So there's a lot going on. It looks easy, um, but visually it looks easy. But in my head, I was like, yo, let me make this unique. And I think that's why this is kind of, you know, people feeling it. So, and you're spending time on it. You know, more energy you put in, the more energy you get out. That's what anything. Uh, so the next sound that I chose was a, um, I think I went straight to the kick. I was really happy with all the craziness I did with just the loop. Um, no, it's not the kick. Looks like it's out of order. Uh, no, I use contact five and I think it's like a pluck. So let me check it out. It's a lead. So here it is. Okay. That's weird. So anyway, let me show you exactly what I chose uh, in Contact 5. I honestly don't remember. Oh, I use Excel by output. So it's like a layered vocal effect. Uh, so next sound, I uh, went to the drums. <laughs> that type of pattern is like jumpy it, it's it, it makes your nerves kind of upset like it, it kind of throws you off and that's what I was intending it for um, it's not a typical hip-hop beat or typical rhythm it just has this urgency and unsettledness and if you also notice I uh, layered the kicks um, they kind of create my own kick and kind of isolated the frequencies and whatnot uh, you can use these mod x and mod y to filter certain sounds or you can just use eq um because i always eq everything notice how where i'm cutting the highs in this kick compared to what i ended up doing in this kick so that just gives you an idea of what you're doing you're just basically shaping the sounds uh, the next thing probably was a snare a hard trap snare typical and then hi-hat and notice the rhythm of that it goes straight through the whole beat but it's it stops and goes it's not a hit every eighth note or whatever they kind of make it more unique and just give it a little more flavor uh, this hi-hat was pretty straightforward, but it changed in pitch and uh, Yeah, check it out Yeah, I forgot I did that so it goes straight forward, but velocities change here and then there's like a really fast hi-hat roll changing velocity as well uh, to do that uh, you can alt and alt a select all and alt r that choose the randomizer and then you can do panning and velocity and some other cool stuff to do that uh, velocity really fast instead of just raising one at a time this i kind of just drew in like that uh the second part pattern seven um same thing change velocities but i have like triplets going down in pitch so let's play it out again See how the first hi-hat has its own rhythm, then the second has a different rhythm. 
and a lot going on. So the next sound that I had was on the one and it's a vocal lead, I believe. See? So sometimes you can put cymbals, you can put hi-hat, open hi-hats, or any type of chord jab or some type of hit. I chose to use like a vocal, like a eerie ghost saying uh, whatever. Uh, and I think I put a symbol on top of it. So I used two different elements. See, I use a symbol as well. Just to give it a little more edge. Uh, the next sound uh, is the 808. So with the 808, it's mostly octave jumps. So here, check it out. And if you notice, the 808 is basically copying what the kick's doing. Um, so you can copy your kick and paste it in the next pattern. It's kind of cool. And then you can mess around with different notes. Uh, as long as you in the right scale, whatever, and you know all the notes. Um, so with that 808, I probably did, um, yeah, shifted it off the grid a little bit. So it hits a little after the kick. And I also side chained it uh, to the kick. I always do that. So that way the kicks shine through the 808. Uh, let me just show you visually what that does. So basically these sharp um, transients, like these downward mountains, if you will, or downward, um, I don't know, triangles, they cutting through the 808 which is the white and the purple the purple is the amount that it's cutting through so it's like slicing through the sound so that way the 808 i mean the kick can shine through the beat a little more and hip-hop has been doing that since the beginning so you know and you want your drums to hit like that's a way that you know makes your drums more prevalent makes your drums stand out more and if you notice like just hip-hop drums are just very very important in that particular genre and then i use the riser and that's the last sound that i chose in this beat and that's at the beginning uh, i can play it for you right here so you can see how it um, came about just gives it some energy um, it's an old school riser but it does its job plugin wise i don't think I did that much plugin uh, stuff except for the first and you notice nothing's pan except for the vocal lead at stereo separated here um, plug in wise just did some reverb on the riser I didn't even use EQ on the 808 uh, most of it's just EQ and reverb and no panning that's crazy uh, the kicks I did some uh, like I showed you earlier some EQ stuff so that way they stand out together a fruity soft clipper I use just to make it hit a little harder and that's pretty much everything in this beat it, the beat came out dope it's not very complicated I guess I spent the most time probably with the loop and trying to make it just really different um, so with mastering um, there's thousands of different ways you can master a beat but I just use isotope products I use the neutron 2 and ozone 8 um, track assistant for neutron 2 and then i just basically adjust to taste with each module and see what i want to change what it predicted um, i usually keep it on clean here uh, because it's not as aggressive uh, with or as subtle so it, clean is pretty much good to go when you're doing different things um, but it varies for every track don't take it you know do it this way every beat is different every sound is different and every vision is different so don't think just one way is the highway you know what i mean so anyway i use master assistant for ozone 8 and pretty much the same process i don't know why i have the eq band that high i must have um had some shallow area in the beat use a maximizer ventures tape and imager those are like my go-to's there's tons more in there so yeah that's pretty much it and tonal balance control to kind of 
balance things out it won't be as accurate because I actually turn this off for the sake of video ozone 8 so let me start the video um, beat from the beginning and into the verse uh, into the chorus and the verse areas so that way you can kind of feel out what I did and notice like there's movement here where like I mentioned the automation is going in and out with the filtering um, also there's different elements going in and out during the verse and then the chorus is back strong like the beginning here so enjoy and check it out See how I went straight right into the chorus, so I wasn't playing around with this beat. I had a few change-ups here and there, but it came out really dope, and I'm happy with the the result of it. So anyway, hopefully, you know, I showed you something here that you can try on your own and experiment with. Uh, it's just a beat breakdown. You know, I didn't get too far into, you know, particular elements, but I thought it came out pretty dope. So again, it's your boy DJ Fanatic Beats. Um, if you like to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic, that's P-H-A-N-A-T-I-C, or Sounds for Producers on Instagram. But again, Fanatic, Fanatic is P-H-A-N-A-T-I-C. So um, again, your boy DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. I'll catch you at the next video. Peace and love.